Today, I want to talk about PayPal. We will discuss their buybacks as well as their free cash flow. But what I want to spend the majority of this video going over is EPS projections for 2024 and 2025 and how they could affect valuations, specifically looking at previous valuations and coming up with potential price targets for where PayPal could be trading over the next one to two years. So if you enjoy the video, drop a like down below. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe. Over over the course of the last year, PayPal is down around 12%, and a lot of these larger drops come around earnings announcements. Most recently, they announced very poor guidance for 2024, and this spooked a lot of investors. However, even with this sharp drop from its 52-week low of around $50, the stock is up almost 33%. It is still down from its 52-week highs of just under $80. And when you zoom out and look at PayPal over the course of the last five years, the stock is down down over 36%. And we're not talking 36% from its five-year highs. We're talking 36% from where it was trading five years ago. From its all-time highs of around $310, the stock is down over 75%. One thing that a lot of companies have gone through over the course of the last five years is a pull forward in demand in 2020 and 2021. However, after this demand was pulled forward, a lot of the stock prices recovered back to levels that they were we're seeing in 2019. However, for PayPal, they are far different. The stock in 2019 was trading anywhere from $100 to $120. However, for PayPal, they have sunken into a range of anywhere from $50 to $70. And this is despite incredible top line growth. Back in 2018, they were bringing in around $15.4 billion of trailing 12 month revenue. That number has grown all the way up to $29.7 billion of trailing 12 month revenue. And with the stock trading lower, but all the business metrics trending in the right direction, PayPal has made the decision to focus on repurchasing its own shares. In 2022, it initialized a $15 billion share repurchase program, of which it spent around $4.2 billion in 2022, at an average stock price of around $102 per share. And in 2023, with the stock falling even further, they continued buying shares, purchasing around $5 billion worth of shares at a price averaging around $67 per share. And they still have available around $10.9 billion for additional repurchases. And these repurchases have helped driven down their shares outstanding in a very significant way. Over the course of 2022, they were only reducing their shares outstanding by around 2.5%. However, more recently, that number has grown all the way up to a 5% reduction in shares outstanding year over year. Keep in mind what these numbers mean for you as a shareholder. If you have PayPal stock and they are reducing the shares outstanding by 5%, that means you now own 5% more of the earnings that the company is generating just because they are repurchasing their own stock. And just like stock market investors, it's good for companies to repurchase shares when the stock is trading lower. This allows the company to buy back more shares for the same amount of money. This year, the CFO came out and said that PayPal is focusing on spending 70 to 80% of their free cash flow on share buybacks. That means with the company bringing in around $5 billion of free cash flow in 2024, they would only repurchase $3.75 billion worth of shares. However, keep in mind that PayPal has $17.3 billion worth of cash and cash equivalents. So if they want to increase their buybacks and buy back $5 billion worth of shares in 2024, they could certainly do that. And personally, I would love to see PayPal continue to invest in share repurchases in the first and second quarters of 2024. And this has to do with what the market is setting up to do in the back half of this year. Looking at a lot of risk on investments, they are starting to see a little bit of cash flowing into them. And I think in the back half of the year, these could explode in a major way. The market right now has focused on a lot of the top players, the Apples, the Microsofts, the Amazons of the world, and putting money into those companies. However, with a lot of those companies trading at all-time highs, I think we're going to see a shift in money into more risk-on type investments, specifically like Bitcoin. We have already seen Bitcoin run up about 60% year-to-date. And a risk-on environment should also help PayPal in a major way as it has been beaten down significantly over the last five years. And when the market goes risk-on, the biggest change that you see is around valuations. Investors are willing to pay a little bit more for the stocks that they are trying to buy. And in 
terms of PayPal, it's trading at an incredibly low valuation right now. Its forward P ratio is a 13.09. This is slightly up from a few months back when it was trading around a 10.3, but still down from where it's traded historically. Over the course of the last five years, PayPal has traded at an average forward P ratio of 23.6. For comparison, the S&P 500 is currently trading at a forward P ratio of a 21.57, and the NASDAQ 100 is trading at a forward P ratio of 27.36. So PayPal tends to trade basically in line with the market. However, currently PayPal is trading well below market valuations. They have an average EPS estimate for 2024 of $4.69, a low EPS estimate of $3.69, and a high EPS estimate of $4.85. And for 2025, those numbers improve slightly to $5.18 for average, $4.04 for a low estimate, and $5.51 for a high estimate. What that means for valuations is the average EPS estimate right now for 2024 of $4.69 equates to a PE ratio of 14.28. If we look at the high EPS estimate for 2024, that comes out to a 13.81 forward P ratio. And for the low estimate, it is still below the market, sitting at an 18.15 forward P ratio. So if we compare the average EPS PE ratio of a 14.28 to where the market is trading slash where PayPal has traded over the course of the last five years, anywhere from a 20 to 25 PE ratio, that means the stock has an upside of anywhere from 40 to 75% from the current stock price. And this is the equivalent of prices anywhere from $93 up to $120. And if you remember at the start of this video, we talked about where the stock was trading five years ago in 2019. And those prices would put the stock back in the range of where it was at anywhere from $100 to $120. The most interesting example to me as a value investor where I'm focused on buying companies with a margin of safety built in is the example of if they were to completely miss their earnings and come in at the low end of expectations. That comes out to a forward P ratio of 18.15. And again, if PayPal were to trade in line with the market or at its five-year average, it would be anywhere from a 20 to 25 PE ratio. This would still come out to a net gain of anywhere from 10% to 37% from the current stock price. And this is something as an investor that you are always looking for. You're looking for stocks that are trading at a discount compared to where they should be trading. And when you build in a margin of safety on top of that, that allows for you to be a little bit more sure about your investment before you jump into it. And the high EPS estimate comes out to a forward P ratio of 13.81. If the stock were to trade up to a 20 to 25 forward P ratio, that would bring the stock price anywhere from $97 up to $120, which would be about a 45 to 81% return from the current stock price. And there isn't much difference in 2025 numbers with PE ratios ranging from 12.16 all the way up to 16.58. Again, so even with the low expectations for 2025, the PE ratio is still far below where PayPal has averaged over the course of the last five years. One thing to keep in mind with all of these numbers is that a lot of investors are assuming that PayPal came out in their most recent earnings announcement and started sandbagging a lot of their numbers for 2024 and 2025. So analysts really have to take their guidance for what it is. And this means that if PayPal comes in and puts up solid beats quarter after quarter, we could actually see them start outperforming a lot of these estimates. Over the course of the last year, we've seen them basically come in line on EPS estimates, but that had a lot to do with their previous projections. Alex Chris has started to get ahead of that and really put in softer projections so that PayPal can come in with very solid beats. And honestly, I don't think anyone really knows where where PayPal's stock price is going to go over the course of the next year. When you look at analysts across a number of different websites, they have a very wide range of price targets. Here on Barron's, we can even see that because they have an average price target of $69.68, which is barely above the current stock price. They have a low of $48, which is lower than what we have seen for PayPal even over the last couple of years. And they have a high price target of $120. So there is a very wide range for 
all of these price targets. And overall, it's not a terrible thing that these price targets are all over the place because ultimately, if the stock runs up in a major way, a lot of these analysts will start having to bring up their price targets. And that kind of fuels into this cycle of people raising their price targets, the stock going up, people raising their price targets, and the stock going up. And you can kind of see how this trend continues. Obviously, at a certain point, when the investment gets to be at a very high valuation, people will start pulling back and they won't be as eager to invest into it. But PayPal, with its valuation where it's at right now, there is no concern of that anytime soon. I think that over the course of the next year, PayPal is going to be in a great position. And as I've talked about a number of times, if we see the Fed dropping interest rates on the back half of this year, this is going to impact valuations in a major way because savings accounts will be a lot less interesting to investors and there will be more enticement to put money into the stock market. Full transparency, I do own shares in PayPal and never buy a stock just because some random guy on YouTube talked about it. Make sure you are doing your own research and looking into companies that meet your risk tolerance as well as your time horizon. But with all that said, I hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, drop a like down below. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe. And as always, guys, have a wonderful rest of your day. And for the joke of the day, keep in mind that a long-term investment is just a short-term investment that failed.